All right, so this is Phylum Mollusca Part 2, uh, and this is dedicated to class Cephalopoda. You'll probably hear it uh, said class Cephalopoda. doesn't really matter how you pronounce it. Everybody knows what you're talking about. So first off, this belongs to Phylum Mollusca, and that means that they have a muscular foot, for sure. But what is a key feature of this particular class? Well, they've taken that muscular foot and they have modified it into arms. So remember, everything in Phylum Mollusca has a muscular foot, whether it's a snail, whether it's a slug, whether it's a chitin, and clams, they all have a muscular foot. But these guys, like I said, have taken it and modified it into arms. Now, why didn't I say tentacles? That's because octopus don't have tentacles. And if you're like, wait a minute, my whole life I've heard octopus have eight tentacles. They don't. They have eight arms. Now, don't ask me why, but they took the muscular foot, which is on the bottom, and started calling them arms. Um, I, I need to look up the history of why that is. Anyhow, um, what are some examples of class cephalopoda? Well, this includes octopus, squid, cuttlefish. And so here are a couple of examples. I mean, it's not like you need me to show you what an octopus looks like. Uh, most of you are pretty familiar with that, but here, here's an octopus here, squid, um, something called a cuttlefish. Now, I, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the cuttlefish here in a second, uh, and then of course we have the nautilus. The nautilus is the only thing in this class with a shell. Now, the cuttlefish and the squid have remnants of a shell, so like um, cuttlefish, if you just google um, cuttlefish bone. Um, you will see, and you've probably, if you have birds, you've probably bought cuttlefish bone uh, for your birds. It just looks like this white piece of chalk. And then squid have even less of it, and then octopus don't have it at all. So again, just kind of going from where they started. So we have a full shell here with the nautilus, down to a cuttlefish bone, down to a pen, down to nothing at all. And if we were doing the dissection, you would see that it looks like a little piece of plastic. So what's the difference between a squid and a cuttlefish? You're like, wait, these two, I mean, aren't, aren't, isn't that a squid? No, that's a cuttlefish. H how can I tell the difference right away? Well, in squid, if you look at the fins, they're up here at the top part. There's no fin part down over here. We call this covering the mantle. And there is no fin down over here. Now let's switch back over to the cuttlefish. Now here in the cuttlefish, you'll notice that the fin starts here and goes all the way around. And here's probably a, a better look at it, you know, from above. So again, squid you could buy in the store. Um, so you can see this little thing sticking out called the pen. Like I said, that's the leftover remnants. And then here at the top are the fins. And again, no fin here versus the cuttlefish where you have the fins going all the way around the, this covering called the mantle. All right, so you might need to pause it here. Uh, these are our two California natives that you're going to want to uh, jot down or just do a quick sketch of. Here we have the giant Pacific octopus on the left, and then over on the right, you have the Humboldt squid. And so I did say octopus don't have tentacles. Squid do have tentacles, and some people are weirded out by that, like, well, I thought octopus have eight tentacles. They don't. So let's give just a, a very general definition of what is the difference between a tentacle and an arm. So what you're looking at here, this is what's considered an arm in the cephalopod. So you can go ahead and sketch this. Uh, basically, it means it has suckers from the very top or end all the way to the very bottom. Whereas tentacles, and this is really important, I only want you drawing this one, the one that I'm highlighting right here. This, there, there's a pad. There's a little pad with tentacles on it. And then there's this spot where it doesn't have any tentacles at all. So something like an octopus has eight arms, but no tentacles. Squid also have eight arms and they have two tentacles. So let me show you what this looks like. So here we have an octopus. And again, if you're looking here, again, suckers from top to bottom on everything. These are an octopus's eight arms. Now we're to flip it upside down. It looks like this again, from the very start to the very end, suckers all the way down. So these are the eight arms. Now something like a cuttlefish, and I do want to make a, a distinction here. Um, so this is just the written form of what you already wrote, but tentacles are only found on squid and cuttlefish. You do not have tentacles on octopuses. This is one of my 
favorite quiz questions, one of my favorite test questions, because people keep calling them tentacles. They're not tentacles on an octopus. They're arms. And what's really cool is that, like I said, this cuttlefish right here has its eight arms here near the head, and then it has two very long tentacles. Now, if you look right here at the end, you can see the little suckers here, and then this part that has no suckers at all. That's how I know that's a tentacle. Um, so this one here, again, just another look at it. So again, here are the arms here, the eight arms, the two tentacles with little suckers at the very end. And for the most part, cuttlefish and squid are going to use the tentacles to grab things and then pull them in, and then their arms will take care of the rest. So again, again, squid here, we have the tentacle with the pad, little bald spot right here, and then the arms over here. So if we we're actually looking at it, it would look something like this where the the suckers are only at the tips. That's how you know you're looking at a sucker versus a tentacle. And that will segue us into cephalopod feeding. Now, cephalopods have a beak. It, it literally looks like a bird's beak. I'm going to show it to you in the, in the next slide that they're going to use for feeding. They all have it. This means that all cephalopods are carnivorous. Now, if we go back to some of the other mollusks, like some of them are carnivorous, some of them are herbivorous, like they could be either or, okay, one or the other. This time, they're all carnivorous. They're only eating other animals. They don't eat anything photosynthetic. Um, now, one of the other cool things is that because they're invertebrates, they don't have bones. The only hard part, okay, the only hard part on a squid, an octopus, or a cuttlefish, especially you'll see, you'll see this is true of, of octopus, is the beak. So things like an octopus can fit through incredibly small openings so long as the beak can fit through because the beak's the hard part. If it can get through that opening, the rest of it can squeeze through. And so here what we're looking at is that they've made the holes like smaller. I'm not playing it from the very beginning. Uh, but what the octopus will do is it'll just keep squeezing itself through that opening. You'll, you'll It gets a little kind of gross here once the eyes and the head go through. But um, basically it just gets its arm onto the other side and starts pulling itself through. And you'll see it kind of squeeze the, the eyes and the brain and its hearts down, sort of distorting its head. Here it goes. It's going to just yank itself through. It's getting kind of gross. Uh, but can you imagine being able to do that, fit into the smallest of openings? And well, how large or small are those beaks? Well, it just kind of depends on the size of the octopus or squid. You know, some of them are, you know, maybe the size of your pinky fingernail. Some of them, you know, maybe about the size of a key. You know, once you start getting into like um, Humboldt squid, giant squid, I mean, they could be the size of your hand. Like, like that. If, if, and, and this is all muscle right here. If, if that bit down in your hand, it is just going to come clean off. One of the other interesting things about class cephalopoda is they're the only mollusk that actively swims. Now, some of them, can, like, if you looked at the needle rings, they kind of like wiggle around, but it's not graceful swimming at all. Um, but these are the only ones who can, again, in either short bursts or, you know, slightly longer bursts, can actively swim. And they do this by using jet propulsion. So if you remember back to the clams, they have this thing called the in-current and ex-current siphon, basically a tube to bring water in and a tube to move water out. Well, these guys have taken that siphon and have now used it kind of like a, you've probably done this with a balloon at some point. You probably filled it up with air and then let it go like whizzing around the room. It, it, it's kind of like that. And it's actually powered by three hearts. So this is something that people don't know about like octopus and squid is that they actually have three hearts inside of them. And so here just, you know, a very quick animation of how water goes into this cavity. So the surrounding part is called the mantle. It basically inflates itself like a balloon and then squeezes down its muscles incredibly hard and forces water out of the siphon here. And that propels it forward. The two spot octopus are cephalopods that utilize jet propulsion to move. They take water into their mantle, passing their gills, and push it through the siphon, a tube-like structure that forces the water to go through a narrow... Now, here's probably the coolest thing about the cephalopods is they're intelligent. Now, out of all the invertebrates, they are considered the most intelligent. And I know you're thinking, well, how smart can a snail be? Or how smart can a clam be? Um, but they, they are pretty intelligent overall. 
Now, in terms of like how smart are they compared to us, we're talking about like different types of intelligence. Um, they're they're not gonna you know write an essay, but also there are things that they can do that we are just completely incapable of, and they have the largest brain out of any invertebrate, so out of anything without bones, they have the largest brains. Um, they have memories. They can solve problems. These are things that we are we don't see in other animals, especially other invertebrates. We don't see them solving problems. We don't see them with complex memories. Maybe they have some memory, but not not to the degree that the cephalopods do. And even their brain is kind of weird. Like, you know, right here is a, a squid brain. I'm sure you're looking at that. That's not that big. But that's not their entire brain either. Their brain extends into their arms, which is weird. Um, like, your brain doesn't do that. Theirs does. And it creates these very, very unique abilities in the cephalopods. And again, just think how impressive this is. I mean, almost 70%, something like 66%, of all of their neurons, or think about it like like their brain, are located in their arms and well slash tentacles for like squid and cuttlefish. Um, and what's cool about this is that like each arm can think on its own. Can you imagine like? And it's not like they have to process. That's what I'm saying. Like they process things way different than you do. Their arms kind of think on their own. It's almost like um, you assigning your right arm math homework and you assigning your left arm um, an English essay. And each of them think on their own and do their own thing. Like you you would be thinking about something else. Your arm would be in charge of the math. Your other arm would be in charge of the essay. And, and they would each do their own thing. Uh, each arm can taste and smell on its own. Each arm can work independently. Like, again, it's like they have their own mini brain inside of each arm. And this is just a stupid little thing somebody put together. Like, you know, this one is like, you know, mixing drinks while this one can be texting, while this one can be making a pie, while this one is uh, typing up an essay, while this one is tying knot. Like literally they can do independent tasks and it doesn't confuse the other arms because each has its own independent brain going. So this is just how their brain is distributed. They have it like right here in front of their eyes. Uh, on each side is a two very huge optic lobes because they have great vision. It's very different than than yours and mine. Uh, our our vision is is backwards. Like we, um, uh, if you watch a Joe Rogan podcast that I have posted, um, they, they talk about how our eyes are backwards. They have better eyesight than, than we do. What's weird is they can't see color, even though they can change color. Another Again, something totally weird and different. Um, but anyways, you can see that their brain extends into their arms. Uh, and yeah, they have like a stomach. And th this next one shows like more of like where the rest of their organs are at, like their liver and their stomach are located kind of behind their head. The bulk of their brain is located right in between their eyes. Now, the last thing that's connected to their nervous system are these special cells called chromatophores. And this is going to allow them to control their color. Now, cuttlefish are incredibly good at this. Uh, it doesn't mean that squid aren't or octopus aren't, but cuttlefish are like the masters of all camouflage. Um, but even like octopus, they can also change their texture. It's like each chromatophore is connected to a nerve. It's connected to muscles and they can do some incredible things here. Um, they're going to use it for camouflage, for communication in, in terms of mating. Um, cuttlefish are going to use it for hunting. They, they sort of like hypnotize their prey and it allows them to catch them. Like the, it's just sitting right in front of them and it just reaches out and grabs the thing. The thing does it like it's mesmerized by the color change. they contract, the color shrinks to a tiny dot. The overall effect can be really dramatic, and for good reason. These animals don't have protective external shells. They're unarmored, naked, and they aren't great swimmers either. Camouflage is their best defense. They have to be good at it. They do it by changing the way light bounces off their skin. They can actually adjust how iridescent their skin is using light reflecting cells called iridophores. They Special cells in the skin expand and contract to produce a mesmerizing light show that lulls its prey into a deadly trance.
when it's close enough, it snatches its prey with two long feeding tentacles. And hypnosis pays off.